Hi, welcome to the Scott Virtual Grand Orchestra Play Along Flute Sectional of 2020. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Kate and I'm the Flute Tutor and it's very nice to see some familiar faces and it's very nice to see some new faces so you're all very welcome, lovely to see you. Now this year's piece is a spectacular piece, it's called Pomp and Circumstance March number no. 4 and it was written by Edward Elgar. And the secret to the success of this piece, apart from the genius of the composer, is two key elements. Firstly, the dotted rhythm. There's a dotted rhythm throughout the piece and everybody plays it, and quite often everybody plays it together. So we have to agree on the dotted rhythm. And for those of you who've worked with me before, you'll know how fanatical I am about a dotted rhythm. I never want it smoothed out to sound like a triplet. So, it should never sound like this. It's just so lazy. It needs to sound neat and spiky. By the way, just before I go on, if you haven't got a pencil on your stand, could you go and get one? Because we're going to need to mark some stuff in. Brilliant. Okay, so the dotted rhythm must sound very short and very spiky. The semiquaver belongs to the note after and not to the note before. I know that some of you will be doing exam pieces where there's an element where it says you should swing things, but that's not here. Here it's very neat and very short and very precise. So <laughs> Okay, brilliant. The next thing, the second vital element of the staccatos. Okay, so they should be extremely exaggerated and extremely short so that when 150 of us musicians are playing together, it will still sound neat and march-like. So they can't be long and sloppy, or we can't just all be playing different lengths. They must be absolutely exactly like each other. So good and short. Now that's where your listening comes into it. So you can pay attention to what's going on around and about you. But if you wouldn't mind, and if you have a pencil, could you mark at the top of the music all staccatos really short. So. And when you're tonguing your staccatos, it's a neat little tongue. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, brilliant. Now, if you play the dotted rhythm, and the staccatos really, really exaggeratedly, then you create the best contrast for the music that's about to come. It's a beautifully big, sustained tune at G. Now, one thing to note at G, there's a key change. So if you wouldn't mind, again, with your pencil, just ring the key change or mark it or something, because it's gone from G major, jaunty G major, into luscious C major, and we want long, smooth C majors with no F sharps in sight. Brilliant. So, the big tune. And we all play it, whether we're playing the first flute actual part, second flute, third flute part, or the easier ones that I've arranged. We've all got this tune quite often in octaves, so it should sound gorgeous. sound. Huge breath. Think of singing it while you're playing. Also, change the tonguing slightly from the sharp t t t t sound of the opening music to a broader da 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 sound so that the music is smoother and in complete contrast. 
it's a beautiful register for us to play in because it will sound absolutely terrific for the people in the bottom octave and the others in the middle register and will also sound great together if you use lots of air take big huge breaths at m we come back to the original music and it goes back into my key. Now, with your pencils, could you please mark that the key change has gone back from C major back to G major? Now, the spi it is spiky music still, but then you'll get the big luscious tune back as well. So big breaths for the luscious tune and just play out and also keep your chin up. And then the grand finale, beginning at V, just make sure you keep an eye on the conductor. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the performance. I'm really looking forward to it. And so I'll see you all, hopefully, on Saturday. Bye.